how he backed up into the foliage, but as he backed up, he just vanished. Of course, you know, I'm mad. I get in my truck, and, you know, get my, my Bronco, and I go home, and, you know, and I'm calling on mad because we got poachers, you know, on the club land. You know, I mean, I'm like, you know, I've been hunting this land. The thing about the particular location, there was only one way in, one way out. And there was a uh, washer board, and you had to put your washing on there to where you were hunting. So I sat there at the washer board waiting because I thought, if this is one of the club members, I'm going to you know, cussing out good. And nobody ever showed up. But a couple of weeks later, it's the end, tail end of deer season. I got one last chance to get me a bug or get me a doe. I need a deer for the freezer. I go back to the same spot and sit down on my bucket. This time, though, I brought my Sony 8mm uh, camera. Now, if you don't, not familiar with an 8mm, it's like a VCR. It's, it has little tapes that you put in. So when you turn that camera on, it makes a noise. And uh, I would take that camera with me deer hunting because I would use it to, uh, uh, you know, record my hunts. So I got the camera on the tripod sitting beside me, and I'm sitting there on my bucket, you know, just waiting, you know, hoping that nobody goes target shooting. And suddenly about almost 5 o'clock, way up at the end, which is about 200 yards, I see a dark mass or figure come to the edge of the green field. And of course, you know, I'm thinking, well, what's that? And then it stands up, and when it stood up, the first thing that pops into my head is, that's a bear. I'm thinking, kill me a bear. You know, I'm thinking bear road, bear, you know, claws, I mean, I can't wait. It took about three steps to get to the tower. When it got to the tower, it dropped back down. And all this happened super fast, and it's like 5 o'clock. I mean, it's really kind of dim, and, you know, it's, it's, I'm at that point where it's either, you know, silhouette or shoot. And it drops back down like on all fours. Well, by now I'm certain I'm fixing to kill a bear. So I'm sitting on red. I got my finger on the trigger, and I think, oh, wait a minute. And it gets to the other side of town. I reach over and I hit the camera, I hit record, flip that little button up. And when I flip that button up, that camera, and it did this. And I said, you know, I'm talking to myself, I said, it heard that. I mean, I'm 200 yards away. Well, then it takes about two strides, and it's back in the left side where the thin pine were, where I saw it the first time. So I, you know, I'm thinking it's that dude in the back of Gilly suit. You know, I'm fixing to really whoop his tail. So I, I mean, why to this day I can't tell you I did it. I laid my gun down on the ground. I turned around, got in my Bronco, and here I go tearing up that power line. I'm fixing to whoop me some tail. And as I get up there, my headlights begin to pan across the grass. I could see where it came out, a knockdown spot, and then from five feet, nothing, and then a knockdown spot, five feet, nothing, knockdown spot. The dew just began to settle on the grass. I could see where it crawled on all fours on behind the tower, and then the other spots. And I just, I was just kind of perplexed, you know, I mean, I was like, went home, you know, just forgot about deer hunting. Uh, went home, Googled Alabama Bigfoot. And when I did, the Alabama Bigfoot forum came up, and uh, the curator of that forum, his name was Mike McClain, and uh, and I actually called him, and uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, are you for real? You know, Bigfoot? He goes, oh yeah, so they, they've been here a long time. And there's a lot of stories now about them. And uh, so for two years, I did nothing but just read books, you know, Lauren Coleman's books. Uh, uh, the, the best one I think that helped me the most was uh, 
the one done uh, by Robert W. Morgan. And so, uh, <coughs> did, did I get y'all the right there in this cash box? I don't. I oh, you know, Kay? I don't know why. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, well there's. My night down there or something? Yeah, the see them blue tickets? Yeah. Get you two of those, write your name on the blue bottom piece and tear it off and put it on the table. You keep the other half. We'll do some drawing here in a little bit. Um, but I read two books, you know, all the books I could get my hands on. And I watched documentaries, you know, and movies. Uh, and, I, and I remember, and this was the odd thing, is I remember as a kid back in like 76, in Russellville, we, we had a theater called the Roxy Theater. And I can remember as a kid walking to the Roxy Theater, you know, Saturday, and you got a matinee, and uh, you could go matinee for a buck and a half and get popcorn and a coke. And so here I go because Planet of the Apes is playing. But before Planet of the Apes would play was a movie, and all it said was, and I can remember going in to the theater, sitting down in my usual seat, and watching the Roger Patterson Bob Gimler footage. That was the first time I'd ever seen anything about the Bigfoot, period. And then watching Planet of the Apes, and then having to walk home in the dark. <laughs> and then, you know, and I was like, you know, moving around, you know. I, I had nightmares. My mother, she said, you're never going back and watching horror movies. I said, well, it really wasn't a horror movie. It was just a kind of, I don't know, this big, big monkey little thing, you know, walking across some, some uh, logs and whatnot. I mean, I didn't put two and two, I didn't just think about it at all, really, to be honest with you. And then, as, uh, as time went on, you know, as a kid, my mom worked at the courthouse and in the basement of the courthouse was the library. And I'd go in there and check out the books on the Yeti, the Bible Snowman, the Loch Ness Monster, and all those things. So I was naturally fascinated by it. But I never, you know, thought it. I mean, I always thought Bigfoot was in the Pacific Northwest, you know, or up in Alaska somewhere, you know, so far away that, you know, I had to worry about nothing around here. And I mean, and then I had my camera. And then I finally decided to let people know what I'm going to do. And it was amazing because I had hunting buddies. They come up and they go, oh, dude, don't you remember shooting house number four on 600, you know, where you were at? I said, yeah. Don't you remember one armed bandit? You know, it was a guy that hunted with us that only had one hand. We call him one armed bandit. And he'd say, Don't you remember that while what one armed bandit was hunting with us? He talked about the gummy bears? And I said, Well, yeah, but the gummy bears. And he said, Yeah, because they'd stand up and he'd see them and he called them gummy bears. That's the only thing he knew how to describe what he was looking at. And I was like, Yeah, I remember that. And he said, Don't talk with another guy. I was like, Hey, don't you remember when we were down there on the spillway below the lake? And we seen this big thing and we all started shooting at it. Don't you remember that? Vaguely, I mean, I, I was drunk when I was doing that. I mean, I was kind of I don't know, dude. Don't you remember we were camping and, you know, we were teenagers and something throws a log into the lake, man? Yeah, you know, I actually do remember that. And, and I got to thinking about like there was an old barn up there, and I'd go up there sometimes to get out of the weather. It's raining. I don't care. Once, well, I was married for 25 years, and, and one thing she learned is that when deer season opened, she became a widow because <laughs> I was in the woods every day, and I, I, I was just obsessed with it. Um, the interesting thing is now I ain't hunted five years. And somebody said, Why ain't you deer hunting five years? I said, well, I guess I'm not mad at him anymore. <laughs> you know, I mean, I still like to eat deer. Yes, I love these good venison. But, you know, I'm not nowhere near. But it's also because, partly, that I've realized that there's something else out there. And so my goal, when I got started, was to, I said, you know what, if these things are real, 
it. I mean, I know what I saw, but I still have that, uh, that if, you know, if these things are real, then I should be able to find them. So, I began a journey that I would later find that would be just an amazing, uh, amazing one at that. But I thought, you know, if these things are real, I could find them. And so, the first thing I did was I went to databases and I went to um, databases back then, you know, about 11 years ago. Uh, there was uh, GCBRO had a database, the BFRO had a database. Um, there was another website you'd go to called Long Flowers Jerky and Bigfoot. And there was also Bobby Short, Bigfoot Encounters. I mean, there was like all kinds of uh, stories and reports. So I began looking at stories and reports. And then I also began, is that too brown? I may have that too brown. Um, so then I began looking at the database and uh, I put a pinpoint, a little blue dot wherever there was a sign. So when I started looking on um, technology, I hate technology. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, I live right by 